Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. I'm sitting with my best friend Tony, although he's sitting in his house today. What's up, brother? What's going on, homie? Nothing, man. Uh, how was your How was your weekend? Because uh, we're just uh, I mean, we're gonna release this in a couple months or so, but we just got off for of Father's Day. So, uh, how was your weekend, bro? Oh man, it was uh, actually fantastic. Although I was with, missing one of my kids, he's in Germany, uh, chilling. He comes back this week in a couple of days, but he's been there for about a month. Uh, yeah, I mean, Skyla and I went on a nice big hike. She nice. But yeah, it was. I got to hang out with the grandbabies. It it was super nice, man. How how about you? That that's very cool. Well, one I want to say, like you know, although uh, although you, you know, they just say Father's Day is that at least you know my perspective is that you know Father's Day is all about just giving to the family. You know, not necessarily about me, but about like you know how can I be better? How can I be a better role model for my family? Or you know how can we how can we celebrate the whole family unit as opposed to like celebrate me? Because I don't I don't need that. You know, and I think a lot of dads don't need that. They just want to you know kind of celebrate the family unit. Um, so uh, for me, dude, I went on this really cool hike. Uh, if you're ever in Maryland, I highly recommend that you do. It's called High Rock lookout and it's this amazing lookout and then you know people have like uh they they graffitied and spray painted the rock and a lot of people don't like that but i thought it was very very cool it's like this like graffiti rock in the middle of like the woods essentially you know and you're overlooking you're, you're so high in the area and you're overlooking um um the pennsylvania valley there um, so that was very, it, it's very cool. Um, and to look out and to kind of see like, like to kind of see like the graffiti on the backdrop of like this big oasis essentially it's a bunch of farmland and stuff but uh it, it just it, it it's very cool it's it, it's very, it's just kind of very cool you know it's pretty yeah so, ditto man we were, we were overlooking the shenandoah river um at a at a high mountain point and uh it was just it was breathtaking just sitting there with my daughter and yeah. talking and just the view was and the company was second to none it's amazing like there's definitely something about like overlooking nature breathing it in or being in it you know i think that like there's some psychology work that's going on right now like just about like grounding yourself and like even if you just take your shoes off and you're standing on the earth like you know the endorphin rush that you get or you know what's the last thing I, it's probably like a it, it's probably like an instagram like reel or something but you know if you hear water or something like it it like it increases your endorphins just make you feel better make you feel more connected oh, um, it just makes me want to pee <laughs> well, well, after the pee, <laughs> oh, <God. Okay. laughs> the, the water, uh, the, the the water just kind of relaxes you and stuff. And like, I'm I'm buying into that stuff more and more and more as we get um a, a, as I get older because I think you know what I've noticed is that as I've gotten older, like the nuance stuff matters more. You know, when I was 30, it was all about like the impact stuff, like how much impact can it be. But now it's like recognizing the nuance and just how comforting that is. Yeah, uh, spot on, man. Like you, you know, you just don't sweat the small stuff. You know what I mean? It's all big picture, and it's yeah, it's, it's a big picture, but small picture for me, right? Like standing in the grass is like important. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know I mean? It's like like when I was thirty, I don't necessarily, or twenty, I don't necessarily know if I would have recognized the nuance within my body from standing in the grass. I, this sounds so weird. Anyways, dude, I'm excited about our um about our conversation today. Yeah, so. Just nerd. Um, I'm excited about our conversation. We get to talk to an old friend of ours, um, an old friend who's not old, who's very young. Um, but uh, but I'm always excited to talk to our guest today. Um, our guest today is Gina Bianca, and um, we've done I don't know, man, like 50 podcasts with Gina or something at this point. But um, <laughs> but we get to talk to her once again today, and, and it's just really cool when we can just like uh, bring a friend on and just and just chat it up. So uh, so you ready, man? So yeah, let's do it. She's just definitely a, a, an original uh, OG of the podcast. And, uh, yeah, and she's she supported the podcast. She's been a friend of ours for a while, and uh, yeah, anytime we get an opportunity to talk to her, because she has always has so much going on, and and 
and, and so much insight and knowledge of the industry it, uh, and she shares it, which is great. She shares it. Exactly. You know, it's actually cool. And before we bring Gina in officially, like, you know, uh, I think number one and number two, most listened to podcasts ever are both from uh, are, are, are the top two are, are, are Gina Bianca. So like, of course, that actually shit, Gina, change it. Uh, Gina, man, welcome to the podcast. <laughs> I'm really number one and number two. I think you are. Yeah, yeah, I think I think I don't really pay attention to those numbers, but um, but, you know, you're just consistently on the top. You change your name, though. It's not Bianca, is it? My last name is Sicard now, but my oh. I guess my stage name now is Bianca because I'm not changing, uh, not changing my Instagram. <laughs> Listen, between you and Olivia, I don't know what to do because every I go Olivia Smalley, she's like Thompson, you know, she like it like starts screaming in my ear. So uh, between you and Olivia, nobody's going to know who you guys are. Ah. <sighs> I know. Well, me and Olivia are, are old fashioned. We like to honor our men, but we also have built a name for ourselves as strong, independent business women. So it's always a little, uh, little challenging to do the whole last name thing, but, um, thank you for having me and happy father's day to both of you. And I was listening to your little banter about being outside and it's so true. It does really like make you happier to be with nature. So I'm glad you guys got to do that. And again, super grateful to be on the show today. Thank you, man. You know, um, just to kind of transition from what we were talking about earlier into this, like, if you and if you listen to like Gina's uh, the 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 handful of podcasts that we've done with Gina, every time we talk to her, she's a little bit more of an evolved human being, you know. And like in each podcast, and I'm not making fun, I promise you, I'm not. It is that is is that it's it's been very nice standing where we stand and kind of watch the evolution of Gina. And it, it's been, it, it's very, very cool. And I think that we need to pay a little bit more attention to that understanding that, that we're all evolving human beings and that, and that evolving because we never evolve, right? Like, I mean, we're never evolved, meaning like that means something, you know, we're just, we're just, we're just constantly evolving. And if you were definitely to listen to the handful of podcasts that we've done, we've watched you evolve on that. And, and one, I want to congratulate you, but two, I really want to take notice to that because I think that that's really, really important that, um, that you can change who you are, whether it's branding or whether who you are as a person or just give, just give life grace. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to some changes. You know, I, I I'm growing up, you know, I, I turned 30, um, turn, turning 32 tomorrow. You Happy know, birthday. yeah, My thank you, soul. Gemini life. Um, You're Gemini yeah. like Tony. Yeah, Gemini. <laughs> Gemini's are the best. Me, myself, and I, my three personalities. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I can definitely see uh, with the podcast that I've done with you guys and just over the past like decade of my career and in my life, I've changed and grown and gone through so much. And I think like with your thirties, you just don't give a fuck anymore about like what people think. And you get a lot more comfortable with like who you are. And, you know, I love my twenties, but I worked my freaking ass off all through my twenties. Um, I was not sober in my twenties, which, you know, that's, a whole different story, but, you know, being 30, knowing what I know now, I built a beautiful business for myself. I'm, I'm married, you know, I, I definitely could see the evolution and I do feel like I'm, I'm an actual, I feel like I'm a grown up now. I feel like I'm a grown up. You know, who, you were talking, go ahead, Tony. Who, who said, who, who was this that said, if you're the same person at 50, as you were at 20 or 30, you wasted 20 or 30 years. That was Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali yeah. said, if you're the same person at 20 that you are, if you're the same person at 50 that you were at 20, you wasted 30 years of your life. Well, that that's what makes us unique, Tony, me and you, because as Geminis, we're different people every hour. <laughs> Touche. Tori <laughs> has, has witnessed yeah. that quite a few times. I love being a Gemini. I've never identified with anything so much, but other than being Italian. <laughs> yeah, but even my birth date's a Gemini. It's a uh, six eight six eight. I love that. So that's even a true Gemini. So I'm Gemini through and through. <laughs> I love that. That's through, awesome. Through and through. I want to bring up something though. You said like in your thirties, you just don't care anymore. And and just I would, don't care. I would argue in your twenties, at least Gina, in the way that you presented yourself was like you didn't care, but it was almost in an aggressive manner. I don't care now. Like as you start to get older, it's like it's like you don't care because you don't care. It's not like I need I don't care and I'm going to put it in front of me. Like I don't care because I'm more comfortable with who of of who I am, and that will continue to evolve as you get older too. It's not it's less of I don't care. 
If that it's makes- more like who you put, who you take seriously in your life. Like the only people I really care about, I, the only the only person I care what they think is my husband of me. Like even family and stuff like that. I don't really care because they're not with me every day. They like, I have such a deep bond with my husband and we look in the same, I always say like, it's not about going in the same direction. It's about looking in the same direction. And my husband and I look in the same direction. He knows me better than anybody. And I, the only person I care about what they think and who I'll ask for like a genuine, you know, is my husband. I always take feedback from my staff and I care about all that stuff. But like, personally, that's the only thing I really truly care about when I was younger, I would like, like you said, more aggressively, like fuck the world. (laughs) Like I didn't care. I was on my grind. I was on my mission, but I did let things get to my heart. Like comments on Instagram, for example, like stuff, you know, I've been in the spotlight on social media for almost 14 years. Like I've constantly been building, building, building my online presence. So I've had a lot more and in, you know, in my hometown, building my salons, you know, I have definitely been in the spotlight and people say, even as a hairstylist, she's expensive. She's not, she's all right. You know, her salon is this, you know, I've always had people saying stuff about me and I did take it really, really personal. And I feel like as I've gotten older, like I'm very secure, more secure with myself, less insecure. Mm. That, 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 how do you, so how do you do it? I mean, if you read like a negative thing, do you just, do you process it or, you, or, or do you just not read it? I don't really get, so I have such a different perspective now. Like if somebody's going to come like how Taylor Swift, she's just like, you are somebody that I don't know, but you're taking shots at me. Like it's Patron. And I'm just like, damn, right. it's 7 AM. <laughs> like what is going on with you that you need to take shots at me at seven o'clock in the morning? Like something's going on with you. And I'm more like feel Maybe it's my yoga training. Maybe it's that. Cause I, I did my yoga t- uh, YTT training. I did a life coach training. I did my Tony Robbins training and I've been in intensive therapy for three years now, but I more look at people like, I just hope you're all right. Yeah. I don't, th- I always think of it as a reflection of them. And that's easy advice to give because people have been giving me that advice forever. But when you finally have that like mindset shift of they're coming at me because of how they feel about themselves, not because of me as a person and just things like, you know, I might do chunky highlights on someone and I might have a thousand people be like, that's disgusting. And I'm just thinking like this person has no awareness that they're talking about a human being. Like they're not an evolved, they're like a non-playable character. Like they haven't evolved to the understanding that their words could hurt someone. So it's like, I almost just feel bad for them. So like with social media and my husband, he, his number one rule with social media is you never read the comments. And on Instagram, we encourage people to comment and they say, you must comment back. So I do my best to like, not really read mm-hmm. too, too much into it, but my perspective is more like, I hope you're all right. Like, honestly, I don't care if you're all right, but I'm more like, I'm just like, damn, like you should figure yourself out. I don't take it as personal anymore. I have had people attack me on a personal level, people that like one person that I like know. And then I had one person who's a stranger attack me a way nobody has ever attacked me publicly. It was very, very weird. And it did really bother me. And the first phone call is my therapist. And she's just like, she deals with like a lot of celebrities Mm -hmm. and she's very used to public shaming, canceling stuff like that. So she has a lot of clients who are going through that or whatever. So her support has been amazing. And guess what the answer is? You never respond. It's really hard as an Italian and a Gemini Mm -hmm. do not want to break someone's legs. You know what I mean? I more want to like go to your house and break your legs, but you just have to just let it go. That's it. I, and that's absolutely the best advice. And, and, and Tony and I, we have a friend who, um, who literally reached out to one of her trolls and it ended up being a nightmare for everyone. not worth it. You're it's giving not. them what they want. Exactly. That's it. And, 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 and that was exactly it. Like this person 
was had been a troll for a while and kind of like slowed down a little bit and then our friend reached out to them and then it was like it was like tightening up the gears again it was like dropping like a v8 up in that in the attention there because then it, it was it was all out and you know you you feel sorry for that but um but but yeah i, I mean i'm kind of the same i like I, I see people as like baby little birds without feathers you know, and 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 every every feather that 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 every feather that they grow, they're ready to uh, they're ready to fly. But you know, sometimes um, sometimes uh uh, it, it's just ugly. Yeah, and but I think that I think I think it, if we have one takeaway in the first you know ten minutes of this podcast is that if if you if you're have a troll man, just don't don't engage. You know, don't engage because, you know, I know how I am. I'm not very good at fighting and debating and all that stuff. So like, why am I going to fight in their arena? Yeah, I could get, I like, I know myself, like I have to hold myself back. Like, cause I, it's not worth it. I could be mean too. You know what I mean? Like I could be mean. But you, you don't know? like to mean you, right? Like you no. don't, you don't like when that person's exposed. No, but like my I'm working Italian, on that person. My Italian women will know, like you just, sometimes you're just like, are you kidding me? I will destroy you. Like literally, but you know, it's not worth it. And you know what? I make so much money off of social media. Like it is like, I built this monster. There's a huge benefit from it, but with every benefit, there's a curse. So you almost have to just have that, like, in uh, you have to have that like expectation. Like, yeah, I'm going to have trolls. Yeah. I'm going to have people who literally hate me for no reason. They don't know me. They don't know anything about me, but they're going to hate me and you just have to not respond. But I am lucky. I don't have a lot of it. I'm not a very controversial person. You know, I could be way more controversial than I am, but I'm pretty much just teaching about hair and business. Like I'm not t talking about politics or religion or like too much uh, stuff. That's like something that someone could really come after me for. So I guess I have it. I have it pretty easy, but you know, it does always like get to you a little bit when you have that kind of stuff happen. But the best thing is just never respond as that hard as it may be. That's it. And you just got to kind of swallow that and process process through. Okay. Yeah. That happened. Most of it's envy, jealousy and et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? They want to be where you are and they, they don't, you know, and they can't or, you know, so, so it's easy to hate. So it, yeah. What's that? What's that? There's another quote that goes with that. Like nobody that's ahead of me has ever, ha, has ever uh, trolled me. Right. right. Yeah. Like it's always, it's always people that are climbing and not like the people that are ahead of you. Not the people where you want to be aren't the ones that are trolling you. Unless you're yeah. Elon Musk, I guess. I guess Elon trolls everybody, but you know that's just that's just his. I thing. like Elon. <laughs> well, yeah, so do I. I'm not, it's not it's not a thought against Elon. It's just, but he does troll everyone. <laughs> I like that. I don't know. I just the world is weird, though. There's some interesting characters playing in the world. We need we need interesting characters. Hey, um, so you're talking about social media. How has um? Oh crap! I just brain farted, Gina. The 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 uh the thing that you're doing with Ashley and 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 Olivia. Oh. Educate with influence. Thank yeah, we came on your we came on your show and talked about it with everybody when we first launched it. And interestingly enough, today, June nineteenth, I know this is coming out later. We're graduating our first class, so we're really excited. It's been amazing. We had forty students sign up, and wow. we have almost. We've got a lot of them graduating, but it's at your own pace. So some of them are graduating within three months. That's the way the course is intended because we really want to be able to get people to become an educator and teach a class within three months. But also people are very busy. So it is a work at your own pace. So we're graduating our first class today, and then we're making some changes to our course to make it a little easier and more accessible to graduate uh, with your busy schedule. So stay tuned for uh, those announcements later. Um, first off, I, wanna, I, wanna, I, I just I want to celebrate that like your very first class you guys had 40 students yeah that's, I mean it's huge. needed it's needed it's a very big need in the industry you have amazing educators who have never learned to market themselves and you have big name influencers who really need the classical education training to to do it now you need both so the course is very needed so and, and it's amazing like me Ashley Olivia and Bridget we've we really like outdid ourselves. In my opinion, I do a lot of education. The course is gorgeous. It's amazing. Uh, everything is there. All the feedback has been wonderful. And it's been great to get like any feedback we've gotten, we've been able to use to improve the course. 
but we did build the course based on what people wanted. I sent out this huge survey and I asked them like, what is missing from the industry? Like, what exactly do you want to learn? And we had like 90 people fill out this huge survey and we built the whole course around what people really wanted. So it's been great to build a course based on feedback from real stylists. That's amazing. Wow. It's amazing. And kudos to you guys for um, evolving it as well. You're seeing, you know, where it might need to be um, enhanced and you guys are literally um uh, are doing that and, and, you know, hats off to you guys. Yeah. Nothing's ever done. We were talking about that earlier. It's like, nothing is ever complete and, you know, it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be finished. The industry is always changing and I'm always learning and growing. So as I learn and grow, I want to share that with my students. So the course will never be done. It's always going to be evolving and we're always going to be listening to our students to make sure that the course consistently is serving them because all what we care about the most is the student success. Like, can you teach a class? Like that is the goal. And every student has to teach a class. It could be online, could be in person. Every student has to teach a class to graduate. And, you know, some of them were really nervous about that. And I was like, once you get through this, you're going to be like itching to do it. So I think that's what really sets it apart. Like in within three months, if you really want to do it, you'll be able to teach a class and you'll be able to easily put together any kind of education that you want to do. That's so cool. And are you are like a mama bear? Are you kind of like watching how everyone's social media and presence has, has, has been evolving? Yeah. So I go through and I try to follow everyone on there. We do um, live sessions. So I get to, my big thing is I want to see your face. So we tell them like, put your camera on. They don't have to, but like, I want to see their face. So I could put a face to the name and like, get to know them. But it's cool. Cause on the live sessions, you're, you're listening to them. You're getting to know what's going on with them. Uh, you follow them on Instagram and then we have our Facebook page too. So it's, it's good connections, but it's been very very like emotional. A lot of the students are very like grateful that the course exists because this has been a dream of theirs for so long, but a lot of people don't share how to do it. Like you'll see like a lot of big name educators out there doing 20 classes a year, but they're not uh, very easy to give away their trade secrets. Like how are they doing it? Because the market is quite saturated now. Um, and people aren't giving away the education and knowledge on how to do it. So a lot of people want to do it, but they feel like it's completely out of reach because they don't have a mentor. So a lot of them are just really grateful for the course. And a lot of them have had this dream forever. A lot of them are parents and, you know, maybe they wanted to do it when they were younger and they're like, I'm, I'm taking this huge step for myself and it's beautiful. Like there've been tears on every call. Like, and I was not expecting that. Like, I wasn't expecting that kind of reaction to a course, but I, it is a life-changing thing. It's helping people make more money. It's helping people tell their story. It's really beautiful. So I'm, I'm very pleased with how it's been going and I'm excited. We're starting our next run for promotion now. Oh, that's so cool. Congratulations. Congratulations to all you guys. And like, you're just finding that void and, and, and kind of filling it. That's very, very cool. Yeah. And me, Ashley, Olivia and Bridget, this is, this is the first time I've had a business partner, three business partners. <laughs> we all work very well together, which is nice. And we all, it's nice to work with smart, strong, independent women. Like it's nice to work with People and hardworking women too. Like, we, like, oh, we need to get this done. Everyone's on it, so it's really nice. It's been a pleasure to work with all of them. That's amazing. That's so amazing. Hey, so, um, what brands are you working with now? I'm actually a free agent right now. What? Yes, I've been working with a bunch of different brands over the years, but I am currently a free agent. I was working with Rusk. Um, I'm not working with them exclusively anymore. But, uh, you know, my journey has led me through so many experiences and I've worked with so many brands and I've been on a lot of different stages with a lot of different brands and I'm excited to kind of focus more on business. Um, you know, with Rusk, I was their director of hair color. They're switching things up. I'm not really sure what's happening there, but you know, I love hair color, Right. but I just feel like I have so much more to offer the industry, uh, with my experience 
besides hair color and putting foils on people's hair. And I've been saying this for years, but you know, every time a brand works with me, they're like, sell our lightener. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I like build this beautiful business class. And they're just like, okay, but, but talk about lightener. <laughs> and I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to help people grow their business and make more money. And it's really hard. It's really hard to find a brand that that aligns with, but say a prayer for me because I do love working with brands because my biggest reason for working with brands, number one, love to get paid from brands, right? Right. Great revenue stream. I talk about that and educate with influence a lot. Number two, brands allow me to give more education free to the hairdresser. So I love working with brands for that reason. So say a prayer for me, guys. I'm a free agent, but maybe I'll find a good match. Brands who want to help elevate the beauty industry and elevate stylists. It's your, you know what it is? It's like the way that I think about it, especially when you're talking about like a manufacturer, you know, that actually has a product. It's such a, it's such a long road for ROI when you're talking about business. Right. Like, it's not like, it's not like, Hey, sell my, sell my lightener. And here you're going to, you're going to sell X amount at the end of this class, you know, with the business thing, like the ROI for these brands, I think it's, I think it's important and, and pertinent that we do this, but, it, but it's just a long road to kind of, to, to kind of get there. Yeah, I do agree with you. Working in corporate is so weird too. Like I'm an entrepreneur. Yeah. Well, that's, and I think that that's it too. Like it's, it's trying to take all these entrepreneur brains and, and, and systemizing them, um, which, which, you know, does, I, I don't, I, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I think that, you know, it, it just is anyone that's worked with anyone that's worked with the brands, you know, it's like, it, it, it's, it's looking through the, uh, through the lens or through the funnel of, of an ROI and an immediate one at that, you know, and, and, you know, money's getting tighter too. So, you know, I understand it, but, um, but, but it's certainly that. Yeah, but I've worked with a lot of different brands throughout my career and I've had generally good experience. Like I I just have so much experience now with it. Like I've had three contracts, I've worked on stage, I've worked in development, I've worked in marketing, I've worked in education. I have so much experience now, which I'm super grateful for. And I know like the other thing with getting older and in your 30s, like your perspective on like when things happen. Like when things happen, it's like, I have really developed the muscle for life is not happening to me. It's happening for me. Like all of the experiences that I've had are leading up to my ultimate purpose. It's like my ultimate thing that I'm going to be doing. Right. So it's like, instead of being all like, oh, it didn't work out. Or, you know, instead of being a little desperate or like upset over things i'm more just like all right well this is everything that i've learned and i feel like i'm able to offer so much more with every single experience that i've had and it's i don't know i like working with different people too so i think with business it's going to be i haven't wanted to teach hair for a long time for yeah. like six years i've been kind of like all right like I will do foils or I'll do color correction because I'm good. Right. I'm a good teacher. I'm a good hairstylist. But like for a long time, I feel like I've been like, all right, I want to help people with this. So like my next tour that I'm doing hairstylist hustle, that whole tour is 80% business, 20% hair. Ooh. I was going to, I'm doing, uh, 15 classes business only. I want to hold on, Jen. I want to talk about this a little bit. Is that is that certainly, and this is kind of bit not my soapbox thing, but but I'm 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 looking for understanding, right? And that is that I'm certainly coming out of the pandemic. It was um you know, there's almost like this anti or this toxic kind of uh, uh hustle culture chat that's going on, you know, and like and like so much stuff is about, and I'm looking for understanding with like I just, I, I, maybe I'm of the age or I'm of the era or whatever that like, if you want to get anything done, you got to put the work in, you got to do the hustle. So, um, I certainly understand about balance and in, in things. And I don't know if that's what's really being said, but, but, but can you kind of walk me through or, or what, or have you seen that one? Let's, let, let, let's qualify it there. Have you seen like this, this, this social media thing about, about toxic, uh, hustle culture? 
Yeah. You know, I think, so I I've been in therapy for three years. So my therapist the other day was like, how's, how are you doing? And I'm like, I'm good. I haven't really been working that much. Like over the past four months, I haven't really, no, not four months. What am I talking about? Two months. I haven't really been doing anything. I went on a three week vacation to Europe. I'm like, just chilling. Like my tour ended. I did 15 classes already this year. Uh -huh. My tour ended and I just been like chilling, doing not much work, computer work. Right. And my therapist is just like, I know you and I know you saying you're not doing much is you're doing triple what anyone else is doing. <laughs> and I'm just like, I'm like, all right, let me count back my days. So Tuesday didn't do much Wednesday. I I'm like counting back. I'm like, yeah, I am working to me, not working. I'm still working. Like I have been bred and I've built my career doing 10 times what anybody would do. That's why you see me where I am today. You know, I have four businesses, make good money, touring, brand deals, a lot of followers, whatever. You see that because I've worked for it. Right. It's never been handed to me. So am I working on myself to have balance and to have awareness of what's healthy for me at certain times and what's not right? Am I working on that? Absolutely. Am I working on that? Did I work on that my whole life? No, I didn't have the resources to pay 250 an hour for a therapist. You know what I mean? I didn't have those resources at 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, all the way up to 29. You know, I didn't have those resources. I've been paycheck to paycheck my entire life because everything has been going back into my business. As I've gotten older and more successful and more financially free, do I have those resources? Yeah, I have those resources now. Would I go back in time and change anything that I've done to get where I am? No, I wouldn't, you that's know, it, I, and that's just me being blatantly honest, right? Did I go through a lot? Absolutely. I did, but like, I wouldn't change it for the world. And I have a beautiful work ethic that I get from my mother, but I think that there's, and I don't want to be the toxic person, but I think it's also toxic to shame people for working hard. Mm. You know, I think it's. I think that a lot of it is like we spend so much time on our phone and depending on what we subscribe to and what our views are and what makes us feel good and feel comfortable, that's what we see on our page. So like for me, <laughs> I'll see like Tony Robbins, I'll see like Anthony Frisella, I'll see like people who are unapologetically go-getters and bosses and who crush it. Gary V, all of these people, that's who I will see on my page. And that makes me feel good. But yeah. other people, what makes them feel good is saying something else, that hustle culture is toxic. That will make someone feel good and that's okay too. So it really depends on what you subscribe to and what makes you feel good essentially is what you're seeing on social media. And I see a lot of creators creating a brand and a message around hustle culture is toxic. And my course, Hairstylist Hustle, I called it that specifically because if you try to resonate with everybody, you resonate with nobody. Mm -hmm. My audience is the fucking go-getter. Right. My audience is not the person offended by the word hustle. I'm sorry. No, you're not my people. If that offends you, you're just not my audience. You'll probably get offended of me saying the word fuck <laughs> in my class. <laughs> so like I specifically called it hairstylist hustle because I want the class to be for the go-getter, for the person who has these big dreams. And a huge portion of the class is how to become recession proof, how to balance it all and how to live a healthy, happy life. It's a huge part of the hustle because you can't do something that's unsustainable, right? right? So a lot of it is my personal experiences with that and tools that I have been so fortunate to have. But 
it's very specifically for the go-getter. My class has always been for the go-getter. That's why my ticket prices are usually very high, right? My ticket price is the lowest it's ever been, $295 for, cut and co for color and business. And for the business class, it's only $195. So, so I actually dropped all my prices with the economy being in the freaking toilet. So when I went, where, where can one find the class or whatever? Like, how do you, how do you find out about where the classes are going to be and how you can participate in all that stuff? It's GinaBianca.com. Everything's there? Yeah, everything's there. But yeah, I mean, the hustle culture, like to go back to answering your question, I hope I answered it with like, I'm on a rant, but it's just whatever makes you feel good is the kind of content that you're going to see. Well, you know what I what I, what I did pick up, and 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 I'm a firm believer in this is that what you consume is who you are. You know, like what's that old saying? You are what you eat. You know, yeah. um, if you're if you're if you're eating Anthony Robbins, if you're eating Gary V, if you're eating that, that's you, you are what you consume. You know, in the social media world, you know, however, whatever your feed is, that's who you are. That's who you'll become. That's who that's who will uh, you know. Uh, form those neural pathways um, in, in, in your in your head. There, um, I, I you know what's interesting too is that my my Instagram feed is way different than my TikTok feed, and my TikTok feed is for me, completely for me. You know, and it's like if you want to know who I am or what or, or what excites me, you know, scroll through my TikTok if that makes mine sense. mine is the same. I agree with you. A TikTok is way less hair too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. almost. I want to say at the end of the day, I mean, who cares what anybody else does? I mean, like, you know, it's like a salon owner hating on someone like a sweet owner or a marathon runners hating on a sprinter or a sprinter hating on a marathon. Who cares what your your cup of tea is? You just stay in your lane. Do you. And you're going to be around people that like what you're doing. And that's OK. Don't you like to hate on the person in the lane next to you if they want to do something else or do something different? Let them do them and just, you know, and, and just celebrate the industry together as a whole. Yeah. And not everything has to be so polarizing. Like not everything has to be like a life or death thing. Like, do I agree that I have to rest more? Yeah, absolutely. I have to rest more, but I'm not going to shame myself for being a hardworking woman. Like, I'm not going to shame myself for following my dreams. Right. And that's how I am. You know, I, you know, I see, you know, in my coaching that I do with my students and my mastermind group and all of that, I'll, I'll check them. Right. But I don't shame them. And I think that that's a big thing. If you feel bad with what you're seeing on social media, if you, if it makes you feel not enough, if it makes you feel weird, I, I block stuff. I'm like, unfollow, mute, spam, like <laughs> report. I, it's like, I don't want it on my page. Right. So moderate your social. We spend too much time looking at it to not moderate it. Is it, is it something new on Instagram? And I, I just realized it like literally this weekend, like where I can hide comments. Is that new or is that something that's been around for a minute? I think you can always been able to hide them. I, I For whatever reason, it just never like absorbed in you know I, I i use it a lot you know whenever i like tag like connecticut now it's like oh send this to connecticut is cool and we'll post you and stuff you know like so uh you know sometimes you do a, sometimes every time you do a post and you tag a location it's always like you know be part of this uh cool kid in this city um i hide you all the time Corey. <laughs> fair enough i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure it's so weird i just literally this weekend i go oh i can hide all these comments you know i can get them out of the feed i actually did it accidentally to one that i didn't mean to hide and then I had to go, how'd that happen? And then I, you know, whatever, whatever. It's all good. Um, yeah, man, this social thing is a, is a beast. All right, uh, Gina. So uh, where are you and have you been using AI or chat GPT or where are you in that world? Oh yeah, totally. So I started using it. My neighbor, Ruan at Develamark, at, I'm at the salon right now. He has a web company and I talk about him all the time. If you guys listen to my podcast or if you're in mastermind, you guys already know about Develamark, but he helps me with all my websites and stuff. And he came into my office. He's just like, open your computer, type this in, make an account. Boom. And I was like, uh, okay. So I'm like on it. And he's like, ask this shit, anything. And I was like, oh, and I like went through, I was like, this is cool. This is cool. Then I didn't really use it too much. Then. I spent like a whole night using it. I ran my whole website through it to make it, to proofread it. And I was like, how have I lived 
without chat GPT? How have I lived without this? Um, I do see a lot of people against it. And my best friend is a photographer mm -hmm. and she's a little nervous about it because of the AI photos and stuff like that. And I was just like, but people thought Photoshop was going to ruin photography. People thought Instagram was going to ruin the hair business. So I'm not too scared of it. And I don't think we'll lose our jobs to it, but I think you might lose your job to someone who knows how to use it. So yeah. I think it's better to like use it. I do, I use it all the time. Um, I actually haven't used it in a while because I haven't been really working that much in the past couple of back. weeks. Right. Uh, uh, but um, no, I actually am redoing all my eBooks with Proofread. So this is what I love about it because I love writing. Writing is one of my favorite things. If you read like a lot of my captions and stuff like that, I love writing. So um, I wrote a new ebook. I've been wanting to write it forever. It's called Elevate and Empower. And it's about how to build staff retention. And I have this whole framework that I've been wanting to use, this whole thing. And what I did is I wrote my whole story as a salon owner. I just wrote for 45 minutes from the heart, just wrote, 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 wrote. And then I ran it through ChatGPT and I just wrote proofread and check for grammar, but don't change anything else. And it is like sending it to a freaking copywriter. Okay, so hold on. Okay, so I was like, real, real quick, I, I want to, I, I want to stay, spend some time here. One, I absolutely think we should fear it. Like, I think we should. Really? Be, yeah, 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 yeah. But, 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 like we were scared of the internet, you know, like we were scared of, like you said, Photoshop, like, like we were scared of all of that. That doesn't mean don't use it. That doesn't mean don't become acquainted with it, but you should absolutely not fear it. You should respect it. You know, you should absolutely respect it. Um, it is 1000% the next thing. It's 1000% going to change the way that we do everything and not just chat GPT, but all AI uh, type stuff. Now totally. with chat GPT, um, it's all about the prompt. So when you're having it proofread or something, so uh, what's your prompt for that? I just do proofread and check. So I had put it in and then I just wrote, I just put like rewrite this. So it sounds professional, right. Mm -hmm. Or rewrite this from Gina Bianca's voice. Mm -hmm. Right. And it sounds stupid. So my favorite prompt actually, because I love writing and I love my authentic voice. Like I don't like a, the chat GPT fake voice. I like my voice. So my favorite prompt is proofread and check for grammar, but don't change anything else. <laughs> That's my favorite one. Um, and then a lot of, um, I'm doing a workbook for hair. So so okay. So you say proofread and do that. And then like, are you, and then after that, do you like you put a period it. on that and then you paste it under that? So then it yeah. goes to improve. That's really cool. I haven't done that yet. It's nice. It's if you love to write, I hate writing. So I use it for the oh. opposite reason. Okay. So, I mean, it really depends on what you're using it for, but like I'm using it, um, for my workbook for hairstylist hustle. So like I have in my notes from years, okay. All of my Instagram captions, every caption I spend time writing, Stop. I save. So all of my Instagram captions of hundreds of topics, like my workbook for hairstylist hustle is almost a hundred pages. That's the big bonus thing that they get in the class. I'm not doing swag. I'm not doing any of this shit doing the workbook. And, um, it, I took all of my education, all of my captions, and I put them into chat GBT and I, I just wrote, frame this out and I write in everything that I want. So you can put information into it or draw information out of it. But what I do think, and you know, this is to teach their own. I do think that the biggest danger on social media is losing your voice. So I think like you really have to like still prompt it and feed it your voice and you still have to do some work. There will be people who use it to just automate all of their stuff, but those people aren't going to see as much success. It's almost like you don't want, it's like getting a facelift. You don't want to know you had anything done. Mm -hmm. It's like you don't want to look like you're using it. But well, if it 90, can help 90, you organize 90% of the people fail on that because you can tell. <laughs> and, and so you're not going to engage with that. So they're not going to do well with that. If people are saying it's the end of Instagram. Uh, it, 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 yeah. I mean, it, it, it very well could be, um, except I think like we need to not, not we as an us here, but a, as, as a community, like, like 
Well, that, you know, where do we find community? Where do we find attention? Where do we go for that? So I don't, yeah, I don't, I, I don't, I, listen, much smarter people are saying that it could be the end of like social media as we know it, but then where do we put our attention and how do we, how do we, the thing, the, the very cool thing about Instagram is that it is community, you know, whether it's community we like or not, it's still community. It's the way that you and I met. It's the way that I've met almost everybody, um, you know, in our industry is, is through that community. I um, think that just like how Facebook is still around, but it's just not as much time goes on there. I think Instagram will be the same thing. And then t I think TikTok will probably take a big step forward for another two years. And then there's going to be stuff with the headset. Like, I really do think that that's going to be like Apple coming out with their, uh, headset. Right. Um, you know, my friend Ruan, he's huge into the metaverse. His license plate says metaverse. He's obsessed. He's one of my best friends. And he taught his first class in the metaverse and he's setting up my, I could, sh I could, I'll text it to you. Yeah. The network is in the metaverse. Like we already are in the metaverse. The salon is there. We can have classes in there. It's just the tech that a lot of people are going to get frustrated with. Mm -hmm. So before charging for classes, we're going to do some free classes and mastermind, but I really think getting people together and having them, instead of st sitting here on Zoom, having them feel like they're there is going to increase the presence. And I think that's going to become really addicting for people. Like I have one of those AI headsets and like the tutorial is like a robot that asks you to dance. Have you ever seen this? Yeah, no, 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 no. I have one. I'm actually way interested. If you're going to teach a class with it, I want to see it because my big dream, and I haven't even talked to Tony about this, but my big dream is like in the next year or two is I want to do our Pressy Poe event like via a headset. You will. You will. There, All of that is coming faster than people realize. And there's going to be some people who are real hip to the technology. And there's going to be some people who just can't, they can't wrap their head around it and they're going to get frustrated and they're not going to be a part of it. But there's like, I wrap your head around it. Was that a pun? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> but like, I love technology and I'm always excited for the next thing. It's going to be a huge part of our kids' lives. Like I can't even imagine like how much smarter our kids are going to be than us. Like I, I can't even imagine like with, I don't know if it's going to be smarter. I just think it's different use of smarts. How will, how you rate, how you raise them. Right. But like the, uh, like, think of this, like when you have a kid who's three years old and you can give them an app to help them learn how to code at three years old, right. Or learn how to create music at three years old, or you the tools that we have, like, it's just super advanced. And just like, we didn't have that when we were younger. So everything, my, I think it's called Moore's law. My husband always, I always ask my husband, like, what's the name of that? But like technology, like dupl it like um every th every 18 months it doubles or something it doubles yeah like so it's it's insane to think about but i'm excited for it i'm never i i appreciate what you said about respecting it but i always am the first person to like step into new technology well, I, mean, I mean here's the truth gina if because i have i'm the wizard but the truth is is that just like social media is amazing it also sucks it's equally sucky as it is amazing and we chatted about this a little bit at the beginning of the podcast. everything you know so chat gpt or not chat, chat gpt but ai is going to be both amazing and it's going to suck you know it's going to it's going to equally suck or you know you try to weigh it so it doesn't equally suck you know so it 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 it, it equally you know it, it it it's more of a benefit than it does suck however it sucks I think the suck is bigger the older you get. Just like, just like any, like with your parents, with with you know computers and internet. I think the older you are, the less adaptable you are to to the newer technology. The learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, have you guys seen the new Black Mirror episodes? No. Should I? Yeah. So watch. You got to text me after you watch it. The first episode of Black Mirror. You gotta watch it. I, that's the only one I've watched so far, but I was like blown away at so this crazy. episode. I'm not gonna give anything away because as you watch it, you're gonna be like, wait, 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 what? What? It is so good. But there's brand new episodes. There have hasn't been new episodes in years, and there's six brand new episodes. So go watch the first one. It's called Joan is Awful, and literally text me after you watch it. I'm scared now. I'm terrified. I'm, I'm a little terrified. Of black, of, of, black mirror I'm, is I'm super crazy. Mirror. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little fearful of that black mirror stuff. Um, to, to, to take it back a little bit. Um, and again, this is just my two cents 
But I think that, you know, as as AI starts to take over more and more of the world, I think authenticity is the currency. I think uh, I think human uh, um, being able to be authentic and to be real is the currency um, of the future. Because because my opinion is about music and stuff is Prince is always breaking through. Right. Like like super, super talented people are definitely breaking through. I don't know what happens with the people that aren't like the super talented necessarily. But but I think that. But I think that, you know, the, the great ones are always going to break through. And I think that and but I also think that the currency moving forward is going to be, you know, authenticity and being real because we're going to have so much not real that I, I still think that I'll have the weight. Dude, wait till you watch that Black Mirror episode. Damn it. Dude, wait till you watch it. Everything we're talking about, you're going to be like, just wait until like the last 10 minutes of the episode. You're going to be like, wait, what? I can't. I wish you watched it. Ugh. I, um i should, agree with you we, we should just pause the podcast right now we should all watch it together and then come back in and go what with the reaction yeah. <laughs> hey so if you're listening to this podcast yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, uh watch the first episode of black mirror and then you know uh, let us know what and then post think. a picture of your face in the last like 10 minutes <laughs> gina you should totally and completely do a uh do like a tiktok video of it or something it's so good but yeah, I agree with what you're saying, though, with uh, everything going on with AI and stuff, authenticity and vulnerability and being yourself, people are definitely going to connect more to that than anything. Uh, so don't lose your voice. You know, we were talking about um, before we started the episode, I just saw Taylor Swift in Philly or Pittsburgh, wherever I was. And dude, the first like 15 minutes of the show people are like screaming they're shaking they're crying and like i drove nine hours to see her and i paid twelve hundred dollars a ticket to see this bitch oh geez and i'm sitting are there those, hold on hold on are those prices are those scalp prices scalp prices so i'm okay. sitting there crying and there's taylor tears in her eyes so grateful for this moment of all these people. And all I could think about the whole time was Taylor Swift has mastered telling her story with her art. She has built a connection and a relationship with her audience, her fan base, all through telling her story with her art, singing love songs, singing breakup songs and telling her story. And she has built this, like the power it was insane to watch and it just inspired me so much to master telling my story with my art, whatever that looks like, you know? So if I could leave you with anything on this episode is yeah, there's crazy stuff going on in the world, crazy stuff with AI, but if you could put your focus into telling your story and building the relationships with your audience and with everybody around you, you can't lose. Mm, I love that can't lose I, I think i think i think that's a that, that's a that, that's a good statement to end on miss gina thank you for hanging out with us good luck with everything that's happening in the future and even some stuff we haven't talked about you know good luck with that as well um we we appreciate your friendship we appreciate you coming on and uh and just thank you so so much for for hanging out with us tony yeah no ditto i mean uh you're always willing to come and share your experiences, your, what you've learned. And we just truly, truly appreciate you a lot. And we thank you. My pleasure. And everybody listening, make sure you share this episode and keep me at top three on Heritage <laughs> Street. Keep me on top three. All of my episodes better be the number one, two, and three on this podcast. <laughs> so share this episode and make sure if you listen, send me a message. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you especially of a black mirror. She wants to hear about what you think about black mirror. Let me know what you think of the Joan is awful episode of black mirror and come see me at my class. This is going to be my last tour. Oh, the final, few, come on, the final tour. Come on, Gina. Every for, a few years. Okay, for a few years. All right. So for a few years, so not, 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 not forever, not the forever goodbye, but the, uh, no. but the years goodbye. That's awesome. Miss Gina, Gina Bianca Sicard. Yep. <laughs> did I get it? You did. Oh, awesome. Uh, uh never mind. <laughs> Gina Bianca Sakar, thank you very, very much for joining us on your day off.
Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.